uh, DAR is an art collective of artists and uh, architects and I would like actually to begin to introduce DAR by saying what is what, what DAR means. I mean DAR in Arabic means home and indeed uh, everything departure from our own domestic space where when we uh, both arrived to Palestine and began our life there we realized that there was a lack of discussion around uh, decolonization, decolonizing knowledge, decolonization and architecture and we actually decided and thought that maybe or maybe there was no other place from where to begin actually operating and, and bringing a discourse that was lack in the public. So indeed one of the main practices of DAR sometimes is that how to operate in the domestic and try to actually uh, influence the public rather than the other way around and in, indeed this was a little bit became a very important part of uh, our practice we are both a partner in in life and and uh, uh, in work and have been all the time uh, the family the extended family uh, the practice actually included uh, everyday practices of life and and we all the time try to understand how to conceptualize them understand them better uh, comprehend them in order to uh, actually go further in our standing of of our uh, daily life uh, today i think this is maybe the way i would like to begin to introduce uh, dar and the practice dar is uh, doing yes dar in fact means um home in, uh, in Arabic, but also it stands for decolonizing architecture, art and research. And maybe it also says something about the fact that our artistic practice um, in a way situates itself among the, the sphere of architecture, art and, um, and research. Um, and, and that's maybe is also his um, own uh, experimental uh, dimensions. Um, in a way we try to inhabit this uh, different uh, different words and bring them together. An important part that uh, it was always parallel to our own practice was always um, the creation of um, uh, of learning environment. Um, since we moved to Palestine, it was very important for us to um, also consider how to build a self-organized uh, learning environment in a place where there are not so many uh, formal uh, educational uh, institutions. And that uh, desire um, and interest in, uh, um, in processes of learning was something that in a way brought us into, um, into different places and, and different uh, experience. Okay, the, let's say the other important um, aspect in our practice has to do with the fact that uh, it is always uh, done in collaboration. It's always, um, in a way, uh, built um, around um, a series of relations with people and a series of relations with, uh, with sites. Our early projects were um, based around uh, the idea of uh, decolonizing architecture that meant essentially to um, uh, rethink the um, Israeli economy in the moment that they would be uh, evacuated uh, from the um, Israeli government. And that meant, in a way, also for us to open up um, political imaginations. And in fact, that maybe is also the other important aspect in, uh, in our practice, is the relations that exist between um, uh, architecture, politics and, uh, and art. And, and maybe indeed we began with uh, looking at the Israeli uh, colonization and looking at the Israeli uh, architecture in that sense and try to find strategies to subvert these architectures. But later on, we also began to operate in refugee camps and understanding what does it mean actually today to think how can we decolonize knowledge, how can we understand even very loaded concepts such as the right of return, uh, migration, uh, being refugees, and being refugees as as with that is carry 
the political subjectivity of being a refugee and not only in terms of being uh, in a need of aid and being to uh, be helped. In the contrary, we understood that there were so many things to learn from refugee camps, the way refugees managed to self-organize themselves. They managed to actually build their life beyond the state. They managed to uh, actually create maybe different concepts of what neighbors means, of what uh, being together means of what building collectivity beyond the state means. And after that, actually, we re lived uh, and the practice was in Palestine for 10 years. And then we come back to Europe and we uh, the, the, the practice highly transformed also in big part in Europe. And we are based now in Sweden. And indeed, we brought all this knowledge of how stateless people manage to self-organize themselves and create collectivity and, and comprehend uh, pedagogy and, and learning. And we understand that it is a very highly important and urgent manner in Europe today on how people can beyond the state institutions. What does that mean? How can we understand it? How can we open it up and understand this as a new practice and and indeed the tree school maybe is very much located within this um, part of the practice it's like what does it mean to create uh, learning environments beyond formal education beyond state institutions become a very important manner for uh, us as as a practice in dar and the tree school itself <coughs> of course emerged with um um, the experience that we had in another project was called Campus in Camps that was um, an experimental educational uh, program in the Haitian refugee camp in, uh, in Bethlehem. And uh, the origin of, um, of that project was very much built around the fact um, that um, refugee cam in refugee camps there are, there are form of um, knowledges and, and social structures um, they are not uh, recognized. I mean, and, and some of those structures are not even recognized by the community itself. Because every time that we uh, think and we talk about refugee camps, the image that we have in mind is always something that is temporary, something that uh, you know will be dismantled tomorrow, and something, of course, is mainly linked to suffering and tragedy. And therefore, it's very difficult to also understand uh, these exceptional places also as as a source of knowledge and that is what we try to do for um, when we uh, build campus in camps based on the fact that we felt that was a lot of uh, things to learn from how people organize their life beyond the idea of a nation state uh, of course despite all the suffering and despite the fact that they were forced into that situations but after so many years specifically in the case of the Palestinian now have more than uh, seven decades old um, for us was uh, also as architects was interesting to to understand notion of uh, for example private and public in a refugee camp and these are notions that for example are absolutely irrelevant in the case of the refugee camp where it doesn't exist public or, or private property um, and that was um, for us where the constitutions of the learning environment would be also linked to the fact that we should build a vocabulary, we should build a ways in which we um, understand this structure uh, and how actually what is happening there is also relevant in, um, in other kind of discussions. But after um, many years working in this case in the Hesha refugee camp and building together with um, uh, young refugees from um, refugee camp from the southern part of, uh, of the West Bank, we also felt the necessity that we wanted to be in dialogue with all the places that had similar urgencies. And what, in that case, we ask ourselves, what kind of um, uh, uh, tool, what kind of platform, what kind of device is necessary in order to, uh, to engage in discussions um, in different sites without losing also the, if you like, the political commitment, without losing also the importance of, of, of the site themselves. And that we, where we started to uh, think about what are the um, minimal elements that are able to create a learning environment. And that is where the tree school as a sort of uh, both metaphorical but also material environment emerged with the idea that 
um, in order to build a, a school, it's enough um, to gather under the shade of the tree. And the tree, in a sense, is also understood not only as something that, um, in a way, hosts and records maybe all the conversation are happening under the tree, but also uh, for us was an element of, of a living being that um, also remind us um, our um, modernist disruptions with, with nature, how uh, especially people living in urban uh, areas, they lost completely that, that kind of relation and knowledge with, uh, uh, with nature in general. And therefore the tree school was also for us a ways in which we um, went, uh, for example, to Bahia and there together with um, um, a collective from, uh, from Sao Paulo, Controfile, the Landless Movement and the uh, uh, Quilombolas, we um, shared similar urgency. We shared, we were discussing concept of displacement, uh, decolonizing knowledge, um, migrations, uh, and we were uh, exchanging, you know, in that sense, this different perspective, of course, from the Middle East from, uh, uh, and from South America. And also starting to uh, establish these conversations among places that usually are not in communication to each other, because usually what um, the channel of communications they always are uh, channeled for economical reason through Europe or to the West in general. So in this case was also for us the occasions to to try to have these conversations also in um, uh, between sites that usually are not so much in conversation, despite the fact that actually they have a lot of different things in in common. Also, if we think about you know social movements and the relations how art also is mobilized and is in relation with this uh, social uh, uh, movements. And maybe one uh, thing that the tree school is, for the tree school is very important, where our life become a very important source of knowledge, right? I mean, it's not, it's not the books, it's not the literature, it's not quoting philosophers, it's not what we learned all the time to do in schools, but rather than to look back to who we are, our parents, our grandparents, our uh, daily life, the trees that are surrounding us, the nature that are surrounding us, and try to make sense of this. Try to understand that by being together as human beings, exchange, share knowledge, think together, is already enough to have a school and to build school. We, we need nothing else rather than the shade of the, of the tree and us willing to be together and learn together, which for us results to be one of the best learning environments because we all are there because we want to be there, because we want to learn from each other, because we understand as a very important source of knowledge, but the life of other people around us as a very important equally uh, source of knowledge where we give value to each other and, and exchange values. And, and there, there is where the tree school normally also departure with almost no program, right? Because it's it's very uh, the, the the spontaneous uh, organic way of being together, of letting each other, of not having expectations before, of not having to prepare before, of not having to uh, actually build the container before, but rather to let things go and and grow slowly, slowly, and and just to understand that all what we have is each other and then we all sit together and learn from each other. Um, until now we have uh, been experimenting different uh, uh, formats of, uh, of the tree school. So sometimes the tree school could um, last for months, sometimes could last for weeks, but also could last for, uh, for a few days. And of course each time in that sense is different. What we definitely didn't want to, the tree school presenting itself as a model that somehow uh, could be an, um, replicated in, in the same way in different contexts. I think that was also something that we, uh, we resisted. Um, for us, it was much more important to consider the tree school as a sort of uh, entry point, as a way to, to set up the context, but then always being open to um, to the essential ways in which the tree school works only if there is an exchange. And that's also something that we have learned 
uh, very much um, in Palestine where we always had a lot of people visiting you know and there was always the uh, at some point you know this sort of uh, unilateral exchange in which people of course wanted to know but then there was no exchange you know with us and with all the people that of course um, live in Palestine so for us the true school was how we can actually have the possibility to constantly transgress this figure of host and, and guest so how we can also by ourselves visiting other places that of course we don't know but also trying to take the people that we are going to encounter in the position of guests so that we can in that sense this playful aspect of the school that in fact you know maybe as a footnote is important to remember that the um, the origin of the word um, the word school uh, is a uh, is kole, which is in Greek is playing so it's also to remember that in the moment that you are at the school and you stop playing means that you are not at the school anymore so and that sort of serious playness is actually something very important and play is also a way to transgress this different relations between teacher and students between guest and host and that kind of um, if you like then approach then in different um, sites um, as the one that you are experimenting uh, in this in these days is actually uh, radically open to to the possibility for the participants themselves deciding what is relevant what is relevant in terms of content in the conversation but also what is relevant in terms of how this conversation needs to happen and that is another thing that we we perceived and understood also very different uh, how formal education exists. Formal education has the tendency to establish itself as a model that would be repeated as it is and uh, become static. You know, in that sense, we definitely wanted to think. You know, that uh, in order to learn, the learning needs to adapt to the to the situations and needs to actually be very close to, as Sandy already mentioned to a knowledge that is grounded in the experience of the people. The other big problem of formal educational setting is that that knowledge most of the time has nothing to do with your everyday life. And that is what we believe is the poisoning part of the knowledge. You know, it's this kind of ways of uh, understanding formations, but then when it comes to the big question of, of your life, then they cannot actually uh, be so much, uh, so much helpful. So what I think uh, we did uh, in, this, uh, in this time and um, um, here in Zagreb was also enter into uh, a relations with, uh, with the larger group of, of the academy and also inviting them to displace themselves also from, from their everyday. That is another, if you like, not as a model, but if you like as a strategy that uh, we have learned through practicing the tree school. That what is important also that when we visit the group, when we visit the site, we tend to take them out from their normal context. And this is why to, for some members, for example, to school, they also said it was you know, not their normal environment and they will enjoy much more a kind of urban cafe, etc. But I think that sort of displacement, that possibility for everyone feeling, in this case, for example, everyone guest in uh, this new situation was also important for people that actually were participating and were staying um, and, and during I guess this these days the the first thing also that we we did was first to anchor the discussions on the urgency that every single participants of the tree school um, is is uh, is willing to share and that was somehow also the ways to to recognize that each participants is a source of knowledge because the other you know, say important different from formal educations that also establish you know grades establish way of um, uh, setting up outcomes and all of this prevent and actually um, also create hierarchy am among uh, among the participants you know and create all these frustrations that maybe for most of us that went through education at school you know it stays with us for so many years you know and, and impact unfortunately our life you know in this kind of being graded and grading others no the tree school is actually tend to um, uh, consider each one as a source of knowledge based simply on the fact that each one of us went through experiences and then of course 
that is a knowledge that we um, uh, are interested in and that is what we hope that in, in this kind of occasions we can share and to that sharing then become the form of collectivity and, and thinking together which is of course a very important um, element you know because individually um, it, it's very hard and it's very difficult and this is again what might be different from the educational system that tend to individualize and segregate also by age the way of learning meanwhile the three schools think that should be transgenerational and also should be always in conversations where idea can actually uh, emerge yeah, and, and maybe one thing is that this is not the first time we have uh, exchange of working with VHV. I mean, it has been since long time and since the first steps of us becoming a practice in that, that we were exchanging knowledge, looking at each other, understanding how can we uh, actually comprehend pedagogy and, and include pedagogy within an art uh, practices. And I think it, it feels almost natural that we are today in Zagreb, we are today in the forest, we are today thinking together about the urgency of decolonizing knowledge, of thinking uh, art practices today and their role within creating a pedagogical uh, platform. So it feels almost uh, that we are home no? in, in many ways. It, indeed, it, it all went very smoothly, very organically because we don't need introduction in a sense. There has been a, a, a lot of uh, intending each other on where we would like to go and how we would like to understand and push uh, educational platform uh, tower. Value a lot these relations because as, as maybe Alessandro mentioned before is that al building alliances for us in the world is very important learning from each other connecting with each other understanding each other as part of a larger uh, movement is is absolutely a, 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 a necessity that that we feel that in order for us to continue uh, working and collaborating with others so i think we are here to be together first of getting together uh, alone maybe maybe the last um aspect that I would like to mention is the fact that now that we um, after 10 years working in Palestine and, and the last three, year, three years being based in Stockholm but also having the possibility to travel and to start to connect different and being invited to um, activate a tree school in different contexts uh, Hong Kong or, or Dubai or uh, South America and now here we also believe that for us is also the time to try actually to bring all these different groups together because there is one question that I guess they, this, all this experience have in common. How, at, at what point artis artistic practices, curator or artist, uh, start to feel that this moment of crisis and this moment of uh, also increased isolations you know, due to the pandemic, they felt that activating learning environment was something that was this thing that is common to many group in, in different parts of the world you know how in that sense the the creation of, of learning environment uh, and, and pedagogy and decolonizing pedagogy are at the center of, of many of, of our artistic practice and this has to do with the fact that the the closing of maybe exhibition space or if you like the fact that this has been reduced sometimes to only um, you know object based um, experiences the idea of creation the creation of this learning environment is first of all also the way of inhabiting a world that becomes so difficult to uh, to inhabit is also based on the fact that um, through that is not just the learning but how this become in itself an artistic an artistic practice and I think that is also what it seems to me um, both interesting and necessary is the fact that artists put themselves into this front line to reopen up the space of education, not just to living to, you know, big institutions to, to rethink that. I think that could be for us, for the future, to try to bring all this different experience in this different part of the world together in order that actually to build um, strong alliances and, and to continue also to see what are the differences and analogies in, in, in this different part of the world.